These are the questions that go with stone soup. First, I will read questions one through five, and then you should pause the video and press play when you're ready for me to go over the answers. Number one, this question has two parts. First, answer part A, then answer part B. Part A, what challenge does the traveler face when he first comes to the town? A, he is tired and needs a place to spend the night. B, he knocks on a door and a young woman holding a baby answers. C. He is hungry and hopes someone will give him food. D. He wants to fix a dinner but doesn't have a pot. Part B. Underline a sentence from paragraph 1 below that best tells about the answer in part A. A long time ago, a tired traveler walked into a small village. He was hungry and stopped at the first house he saw to ask for some food. He knocked and a young woman holding a baby opened the door. Number two, what is the challenge the traveler faces when no one will help him? A, he has to find wood so that he can build a fire to keep warm. B, he needs to learn how to make friends with everyone in the town first. C, he has to walk to another town where people might be kinder to him. D, he must find a new way to get people to share their food with him. Oh, I'm sorry, I just realized you can't see D. There you go. Again, D says he must find a new way to get people to share their food with him. Number three. Why does the traveler keep putting his nose over the pot and breathing in? A. To make people think he is cooking something tasty. B. To make the people want to make their own soup. C. To make the people angry that they won't get any soup. D. To make the people sad that they didn't help him. What do you learn about the traveler from the way he faces his challenge? A. He is clever because he gets people to choose to help him. B. He is lazy because he has other people do his work for him. C. He is unhappy because he is too poor to buy his own food. D. He is proud because he knows more about cooking than others. Number five. Read the sentence from the passage. The villagers ran to their homes. The word village means a small town. What is the best meaning of the word villagers? A. People who eat in a small town. B. People who work in a small town. C. People who live in a small town. D. People who help others in a small town. Go ahead and pause this video, and when you're ready to go over the answers, press play. Okay, let's go over the answers. Number one has a part A and a part B. Just like I always say, part B will often prove your answer is right in part A, so keep that in mind. Part A says, what challenge does the, tra does the traveler face when he first comes to the town? A. He is tired and needs a place to spend the night. I don't recall that's what the story is about. Remember, it's called Stone Soup, so I can think back and remember, hmm, I think this has a lot to do with eating and food, right? So let's keep going. B. He knocks on a door and a young woman holding a baby answers. Well, this is true. This does happen in the story. Is this a challenge? No, I don't think this is a challenge. It's just telling you one detail, so let's keep going. C. He is hungry and hopes someone will give him food. Ooh, this might be a good answer choice, because remember what I said? I know that this story has to do with food. After all, the story is called Stone Soup. But let's read D just in case. He wants to fix a dinner, but doesn't have a pot. When he first comes to town, is he trying to make the soup? Or is that a result of when people don't help him? Hmm, when he first comes to town, he's not trying to make the soup yet. So I think the best answer is C. He is hungry and hopes someone will give him food. Now in part B, we need to figure out which sentence proves that my answer choice C is right. So let's read this paragraph one more time. A long time ago, a tired traveler walked into a small village. He was hungry and stopped at the first house he saw to ask for some food. 
He knocked, and a young woman holding a baby opened the door. So, I have to underline a sentence. So, let's look at each sentence individually and see if that helps support my answer C from Part A. A long time ago, a tired traveler walked into a small town. Does that prove that he's hungry and needs food? Nope. Let's keep going. He was hungry and stopped at the first house he saw to ask for some food. Hmm, that has a lot to do with my answer choice in C, right? But just in case, let's read that last sentence. He knocked and a young woman holding a baby opened the door. Nope, that has nothing to do with my answer choice C. So I would underline, he was hungry and stopped at the first house he saw to ask for some food. Because that sentence proves that he came hungry. So that's why I chose to underline that sentence. Number two, so we need to figure out the challenge the traveler faces when no one will help him. A challenge is like a very difficult time. So it says he has to find wood so he can build a fire to keep warm. Is that the challenge he's facing? No, because no one's helping him by giving him food. It's not about him keeping warm, so it's not A. B. He needs to learn how to make friends with everyone in the town first. No, I mean, maybe having friends in the town would help you get what you need. But that's not really what the story is talking about, so it's not B either. C. He has to walk to another town where people might be kinder to him. Is this how he decides to overcome this challenge? By going to another town? No. Let's look at D. He must find a new way to get people to share their food with him. Hmm, I think D may be the right choice. Because remember, he asked for a pot and water, and when he starts making that stone soup, other people want to help him. So that's him finding a new way to get people to help. So the answer is D. Let's look at question number three. Why does the traveler keep putting his nose over the pot and breathing in? You know, you can think about an experience that you have that might help you do this. Whenever you, your mom, or your dad, or someone you know, cook something and they're smelling it and breathing it in over the pot or over a pan or anything that they're cooking, and they're breathing it in and they're saying how good it is, do you think they're showing, like, mm, this is going to be a really, really good meal? Or do you think they're just putting their nose over it just because that's where they want to breathe? No, because that would make no sense. So, whenever you eat, smell has to do a lot with the taste, right? Because whenever something smells good, you're thinking, ooh, that's something I want to eat. So, let that experience stick in your mind as we go over these answer choices. A says, to make people think he is cooking something tasty. Hmm. That sounds a lot like what we were just talking about. But just in case, let's look at B. To make people want to make their own soup. Do you think by him putting his nose over his pot and breathing it in and being like, Mmm, this is going to be so good. If only we had onions. Do you think that makes people think, Oh yeah, I want to make my own soup. No, I don't really think that's the case. Let's look at C. To make people angry that they won't get any soup. Did he say anything about not sharing? No, and remember, the whole purpose is he's trying to find a new way to get people to help him. So I don't think he's going to try to make people angry. D says to make people sad that they didn't help him. Remember, he still wants to try to get their help. So I don't think he's trying to make them feel sad. So I think this just proves our answer A is the right choice. To make people think he is cooking something tasty. Because if you put your nose over a pot and you are breathing it in, talking about how good it's going to be, do you think you can trick people into thinking that what you're making is going to be really good, even if it may be just three stones in water? Yeah, I think that might be a pretty good trick you could do. So the answer is A. Number four. What do you learn about the traveler from the way he faces his challenge? So we're going to see what we know about the traveler. It may not just tell you the traveler is blank. We can learn about the traveler based on what he does, right? Kind of like, you don't have to say, Mary is smart. You could say, Mary makes A's on all of her tests. If you know that Mary makes A's on all of her tests, that tells you that she's smart, right? 
I didn't have to say Mary is smart. So let's look at some of the things he's done so we can figure out something about him that may not have been very clear in the text. So let's read our choices. A. He is clever because he gets people to choose to help him. Hmm, I do think he's clever, right? Because he's able to smell over the pot and he makes people think that it's going to be really good. So people want to help him by making it even better soup. So A might be a good choice, but of course we have to look at all of our choices. B, he is lazy because he has other people do his work for him. I don't really think he's lazy, right? In the beginning of the story, he's trying to get food, so he's trying to go door to door. So I don't think he's lazy. C, he is unhappy because he is too poor to buy his own food. I don't think he's unhappy because he is too poor. It doesn't really talk about that. It doesn't even really say that he is poor. It just says he's a tired traveler. So I think they kind of are trying to trick us with that one. But I don't think it's C. D. He is proud because he knows more about cooking than others. I didn't really get the feeling that he was bragging or trying to make other people feel bad or he's thinking, oh, I'm so awesome because I know how to make soup and others don't. I don't really think that's the attitude he had. I think A best describes him, right? Even though people were telling each other not to help him because they barely have enough food and were closing doors in his faces, he was still able to find a way to get them to help. Clever is another way of saying kind of like smart, but almost not in a bad way, but he can be tricky too. Like he's able to get them to help him without them realizing they're even helping him. So I think the best answer choice is A. He is clever because he gets people to choose to help him. And last one, number five. The villagers ran to their homes. The word village means a small town. What is the best meaning of the word villagers? So if you can tell, the main difference between village and villagers is kind of like we have that ER. Oh, got a sharp moment. We have that ER. So we can think of other words we know that do this to kind of help us, okay? So we have the word teach or even dance, right? So to teach or to dance, we both know what that means. Now someone who teaches, we call them a teacher, a teacher. We add that ER in the end of teach. And that's someone who teaches. And if you have someone who dances, what's that word? Dancer. Yeah, we add that er sound on the end. The er means a person who does that. So knowing that, let's look at our answer choices and see which one can best help us understand villagers. A, people who eat soup in a small town. Hmm. Well, village does mean small town, but just adding an ER doesn't really tell us that they eat soup, so I don't think it's A. B, people who work in a small town. Well, looking at the sentence, the villagers ran to their homes. I think this is going to be a clue. Their homes. Well, I think that has much to do with work, so I don't think it's B either. C, people who live in a small town. Remember, Villagers, that ER on the end is telling us something about the people in the village, right? And what do you do in your home? You, that's where you live, right? So I'm thinking maybe C, that villagers could be people that live in a small town. But just in case, let's look at D. People who help others in a small town. I think they're throwing that in there to trick us because we know the story has to do with people helping others. So I think the answer is clearly C, people who live in a small town.